Thank you all for coming to Archmaker.com's May meeting here at the Denny's off 34th and Airport Way. I want to express to you all that it's the goal of Archmaker.com to find the perfect nemesis match for you villains and superheroes. I see a lot of familiar faces, so I want you guys to really get in there and find your perfect match. Now let's start speed arching! Hello there. Hi, I'm Fisherman. Great to meet you. I am Aqua Boy. I am Prince of the Ocean and second in command of all aquatic life. Only the Great Poseidon holds more sway over the oceans than I do. That sounds great. I have a special pressurized suit that can make me breathe underwater and a magical staff that doubles as a fishing reel. I can be the ocean's ultimate jewel thief. When it comes to an arch nemesis, it sounds like you're the perfect catch. (laughs) (laughs) smells like magic is in the air tonight or is that the special pancakes they make here at the denny's off 34th and airport way make sure you say thank you to the fine folks here at denny's howdy partner i'm durango dan i was just a normal horn swaggling rooting tooting eureka shouting dag nabbing son of a runner A big old twister picked me and my loyal pooch Ethel up and transported us into the future. Now I use my knowledge of the Old West to find evil no-gooders. Hello. It's great to meet you. My name is Duchess of Duke. I can read the mind of any person I come in contact with, and by reading their mind, I mean I can tell when they're going to poop next. Well, gallery, ain't that the dumbest of dumb powers I've ever heard of? I'd eat my horse, but I can't, because I already darn did that during the great winter 1874. God bless that filly. Oh, come on. It's a good superpower. No, No, it's it's not. not. Remember, not everyone is going to be a good fit, so just keep moving around if you meet someone with really lame powers like that Duchess of Duke character. And be sure to try the bacon burger here at Denny's on 34th and Airport Way. Mmm, yummy. Hi there. I always feel weird introducing myself at these things. You ever feel like you shouldn't be here? Oh, you bet. I mean, I've got super strength, laser vision, and the power of neutrinos. I'm also a mild-mannered web blogger with an alliterative first and last name. I should be able to just walk outside and have a line of potential nemesis lining up. I know, right? Last week I got so desperate that I put my cape on backwards and then flew through the sky in reverse to see if anyone would notice that maybe time was traveling backwards. No one noticed. It's like I'll never find the right arch villain. Wait, you're looking for an arch villain? Hey, what is this? We're both superheroes! Shit, fuck, asshole Donald Trump! Sorry about the mix-up there, folks. It looks like the orders were mixed up there. That was completely Steve's fault. Sorry. But you know, who never mixes anything up? The fine folks at Denny's on 34th and Airport Way. Try the cherry milkshake, but you might need a super sucker because this shake is as thick as concrete. Kneel before your master, nuclear man, for I get my radiation powers from the sun. Nay, for I am Sentry, with the power of one million exploding suns, sun, sun, sun. And I am Sunny Side Up, 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 up. I am not over easy, and you'll be the one that's runny once my yellow protein powers are unleashed. I'm excellent at making yolks, too. Uh, check, please. Hello and welcome to Stinker Madness, the podcast about bad movies by bad movie lovers. I am your host, Justin. Thank you for listening to another fine episode. With me in the studio is, of course, Super Sam and Jumpin' Jaggy. Now the Duchess of Duke. Yeah, the Duchess of, <laughs> the Duchess of Dork, at least. Why? I haven't been called Super Sam since Spanish in high school. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Super Sam, man! <laughs> no, the Spanish teacher was actually quite poor at Spanish. It was like... Super Sam, how's your Spanish? 
better than yours <laughs> and still not good. <laughs> Muy bien? I don't know what that means. Am I am I supposed to be speaking Spanish right now? <laughs> Super Sam code to speak Spanish because I don't know what's going on right now. Well, speaking of superheroes, this is the start of another three-peat for us. It's our, I think this is our like fourth three-peat of, of similar themed movies. Uh, it's all superhero movies this week and only... Well, no, I guess I guess everybody's heard of all three of these, but these aren't the mainstays. We're we're getting away from the Daredevil and the Green Lantern and the Catwoman. We've at least watched Catwoman, but uh, we're not going to do the ones that everybody else makes fun of. We've got uh, you're going to do Superman four, the quest for peace. Yes, Jackie is pulling the trigger on Supergirl. Supergirl from 1985, I Which believe. Which they are completely related because they're both, and I actually pull some of my boring bullshit. I pulled that punch because we'll save it for next week. Because there's a little, there's a lot to do with uh, why Superman Four is so bad as Superman Supergirl. Okay, all yeah. right. Well, we'll anticipate that with uh, wet nipples. Uh, I'm gonna do Punisher War Zone from 2008. So screw you guys and your super bullshit. I just like guys with big guns. Uh, this week on streaming do's and don'ts, we've got three. Starting with on stars, a sequel to a movie that we all liked. I have a feeling how we felt about this one uh it's Smokey and the bandit 2 starring burt reynolds and uh oh the cute one what's her fucking sally, sally field Fields. and jackie, uh, gleason. jackie gleason and the same trucker guy and the dog and not enough of the Hal dog Needham. well i don't need him does a star but he directs again but yeah uh, and that's all i have to say about that movie <laughs> I did not like it. I fucking hated it. Yeah, it was a... Uh, yep, yeah, nope. So, the first one is, like, awesome. Mm -hmm. And also, it centers around accomplishing an unaccomplishable feat. They don't get anything done in the second one. I... Uh, they just steal the load, I guess. Yep. And an elephant has a baby. And Jackie Gleason, Buford T. Justice has absolutely no motivation to chase after them at Nor all. Nor does he have any jurisdiction. None. And it's... But we do get to meet a lot of his relatives. Yeah. Yeah, he plays three different versions of Buford T. Justice. One's yeah. a, one's kind of like a urban guy. One's, one's a, a homosexual. Yes. And the other's a Canadian Mountie. Yeah. And uh, neither one of them are funny at all. No. 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 They, all, they all really, really stunk. The whole movie stunk. And the fun thing I heard about this was that uh, after it was released, you know, the critics, we aren't the only people that didn't like this film. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. What, uh, the a, critics, what a surprise. The critics lambasted it. So uh, Hal Needham took an, a one-page ad out, and I, be I believe it was either in USA Today or People. It was a major magazine. An entire, I think it was even the back cover, like big-time bucks advertisement and all it was, no words, nothing. It was just a picture of him sitting on a pile of cash. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, it did okay at the box office, didn't it, it? It did. It made a lot of money, but nobody liked it. Uh, it wasn't as successful as the first one, obviously, but uh, it still made him a shitload money of money, especially because, like, I don't think it took very long to make because... Nobody really put any effort out in this film. The final stunt sequence, I... I the Dry it, Lake thing seemed like it was probably half of the shooting schedule was that one sequence. Yeah, and even then, it seemed rushed. Like, there was no actual, like, okay, so we're going to plan this stunt, we're going to plan this stunt. It just seemed like people were driving around crashing cars into shit. It yep. was like automotive grab ass. Yeah, I don't think it could have taken more than two days to shoot that entire sequence, even though they fucked up something like it holds the record for most cars fucked up in a single scene. Oh, like, does uh, it? Like 200 cars get fucked up or something like that. That's quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I bet it took a couple weeks. Yeah, you think? I don't know, man. Yeah. You're making a pretty big mess there. You want to get it all done as soon as possible before somebody has to clean that shit up. That's true. Maybe they just had six cameras out there. Yeah. Everybody go willy nilly for you know, it. Seemed like they were going willy nilly. Yeah, I mean, there's like guys next to piles of cars. That oh shit, there's another car coming. Shit, Gary, get out of the way. <laughs> I just, but uh, even then, I was just like, this is not exciting in any way. Well, even though this is a really ridiculous stunt. There, yeah, it's an amazingly complex sequence, but the whole idea of it is too stupid. It's too stupid because he's like, uh, 
we'll get them off the main road. So they get them off the main road. Mm-hmm. And then now that we've got them off the ra- main road, we'll chase them with a hundred cars. Right. Right. And then the his buddy's like, well, the army of we truckers. got you backed up with our army of trucks that came out of nowhere. And then they just run into each other for about five minutes. It's just ridiculous. You know what my main problem with Smokey and the Bandit 2 is? And uh, help me out if you feel the same way, Jackie. Is is the Bandit pretty much the coolest guy in the fucking world in the first one? Yeah, and then he's kind of a washed up hack in the second one. So badly that Sally Fields is willing to go, to go back to Junior. Yeah. And marry the retarded sheriff's son. He well, goes from Han Solo to like Grape Nuts. Grape yeah. nuts from Han Solo to Greedo. Uh, Greedo's cooler than Smoke Air Bandit and Bandit That's 2. That's true. I will say that I did uh, favor Junior in the second one. Yeah. If yeah. I had to choose. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, it's a turd. Uh, I'm going to say do not. Anybody else? Oh, I didn't like it. Do no. not. Next up on Netflix, 1996's. The Saint, starring Val Kilmer and Elizabeth Shue. <laughs> well. You've been wanting to talk about this one, haven't you, Sam? <laughs> yeah, this. I really like this movie. <laughs> uh, and it stinks. It's but atrocious. When I watched it again last week, I was like, wow, this is. I mean, it's right there. It could be an episode. It's so bad. It's real bad. Uh, they Val miss- Kilmer really takes it over the top with his crappy accents and his glue on hair. I didn't think his accents were that bad. And now I may be judging it in compared to everything else in this film. Like, well, at least his accents are total shit. Like the dialogue. Oh, his master of disguises bit is awful. He's terrible at it. <laughs> all right. All right. He, he might have stunk. Yeah. Everybody stinks. Elizabeth Shue loses herself a couple times. Because uh-huh, I, uh-huh. I was really watching to see how many people screw up, and everybody screws up. In the first scene, the Russian's son, the Russian mafia's son, his right-hand man, he just butchers a line, and they leave it, and he's like, suck me, forgets what he's saying, looks around, points down, and says, sideways. <laughs> like, wait, that was the best take of that? He did worse than that six times? How did that fucking happen? (laughs) And then later on, the guy that plays his dad is like, he starts to stand up, realize he's supposed to do the line before he stands up. So he stops in between standing and sitting and goes, son of the bitch, (laughs) and then leaves the shot. And you're like, what the fuck? That was the only one that worked? Because it didn't work. And the director is like, oh, no, I like the natural feeling of these characters. You just run with it. No, I fucked up the line. Yeah, I, I know. It's good. It's good. People fuck up in real life, too. Yeah. You just leave that shit in there. No, it sucks. No, it sucks. It's so... My problem was it's dripping with cheese. Like, hokey lines and, like, googly eyes. I, that's probably why Elizabeth Shue ended up screwing up her lines is because there's only so much time you can spend giving Val Kilmer googly eyes without wanting to punch him in the face. So I, you know, I was watching for this whenever she's looking at him and he's in like one of his bizarre characters, she seems to like be able to stay in character and believe him. But when he's actually just being Val Kilmer trying to act charming, that's when she loses her shit. <laughs> and she can't fucking take it. She can't believe like, it. She's like, no, dude, like, I don't like no, you at all. You suck. You're one of the least <laughs> likable people ever. The gadgets were just horrendous. The ladder pole thing. Uh-huh. Oh, God, it was bad. Yeah. No, that's... And then uh, it has the other stinker staple. The way that the internet works was just the email oh yeah good yeah, yeah, yeah. night the email was and the, terrible. the loud computers like, clacking every time it's processing processing <laughs> but with digital <laughs> beeps and boops and shit like that the oh, God. and the email has enough like has less characters than sms there was like and it fit every letter had its own box and his val kilmer's typing is like you, you get a shot of the typing that's going on. And it's very elaborate and very fast, and then it's just him going clank, 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 clank with full fist. Well, there's nope. that. Yeah, he's clanking around like he's playing the piano, uh-huh. and then he's got you a foot in there. Hear the sound is like, <laughs> but then you look at the screen and the letters are coming up like boop, 
<laughs> like none of it lines up. Oh no, I don't know how to feel about this movie because yeah. I know it stinks. But God, I loved this movie when it came out. <laughs> it's so so much I want to tell people don't go back. Just remember it how you did in 1997. But apparently, I might be one of the only people that liked it when it came out in 1997 because it also got lambasted. I I and I've told you guys the story, but on the uh, listeners and podcast land, I saw it as part of a double feature. You did because we talked about the movie you saw as a double feature in that episode, and, uh, which was what breakdown. Breakdown with yeah. Kurt Russell. And so I thought it was great in comparison to that pile, but I think I watched it probably at 18, 19, maybe 22, still thinking that it was kind of fun. But uh, yeah, no, it just stinks. It stinks. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I think I'm going to give it a do, though, because there's just so much shit there that's so stinky that it's tough because of the drippy cheese business and like the 90s music sucks. But uh, man, it's a train wreck. But I still liked it, though. Okay. It was enough of a train wreck and laughable enough that, yep, it's a do. Okay. I think it's a mega do because it's ding. It's so funny. I was in tears a couple times. Like when, because I was paying attention to Elizabeth Shue, waiting for her to screw up, and she only does it because she just doesn't like Val Kilmer. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's three dues from us. Last but not least on Shudder.tv, which, uh, as I mentioned, you can get on Amazon Prime in addition to the Star subscription. I think it's like three bucks or something a month. Is Demons, which is a, uh Italian horror movie directed by one Lamberto Baba. Oh, Lamberto, uh, the son. The son. Uh, it takes place in a, th- a movie theater and people get the ickies. People just suddenly turn into these creepy demons because they got pricked with the spooky mask. And there's not a lot of of like things that make sense as far as why uh, things that's, are happening, but uh, that's why you don't touch the fucking displays. Yeah, yeah, good point. Or step in the pond or the fountain at uh, the mall. Yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get turned into a demon. Yeah, they end up all locked in a movie theater, and uh, you get bit. It's essentially a zombie movie, but they're demons. So they're like, do they get to the point where? Because I haven't seen this. Mm-mm. Like, it gets to the point where it's like uh, Island of Dr. Moreau. They just start fucking the hell out of each other. No. no. Nah. Unless by fucking, you mean getting eaten by demons. Oh, then that's, well, the demons. Yeah, they're fucking a lot. The, well, the demons, like, do they. Like, there's a tipping point where there's not any uh, non demons left. Uh, no, that does not happen. Oh, in this that's film. too bad. Yeah. Somebody they, uh... does get a blowjob, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, I kind of liked it. Uh, it's very gruesome, very Italian horror esque, but uh, modern. It has a modern feel to it. Uh, yeah, like an eighties feel, not modern, modern, but not not shots of trees swaying in the background and implied horror that is kind of creepy and weird. It's very just gory and fun. I didn't like it. You didn't like. Oh, it. I'm gonna okay. give it a do not. Okay, what did you what did you not like about it? I don't know, it was just kind of slow for me and I don't know, it's just kind of overdone. Some of the gore was kind of hard for me to watch. I just didn't like it. <laughs> oh, cuz it was too gory? Too goopy. It's happened before. Yeah, yeah that's true. I don't like the goop. Yeah, all right. Well, uh I liked it. Uh I thought it was a fine addition to the Bava family collection. I would watch another Lamberto Is it, Bava uh, movie. As efficient as Mario's pictures? Uh, no, I would not say that. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, it got to a good place. I liked the ending again. Um, I enjoyed it. It's not not great, not, whoa, fuck, or anything, but uh, I thought it was fun. So check that out from me. Zam, it's your uh, pick this week with Superman 4. What did you bring for the wild card? The ability to gather um, you have to introduce oh, the segment. i'm sorry because i f- forget that because it's superman i have to basically pr- do the superpower thing okay the great oh. so we're doing the debate. great superpower debate because we're on a super hero run okay so, all right uh this is the ability to gather massive amounts of static massive amounts and of then static. shoot it you are sock man you pretty much you just rub your feet but you gotta like rub it like crazy it's not like you can you're able to just hold the static better than someone else. You wouldn't necessarily be able to make it faster, so you're going to have to do a lot of rubbing your feet on the carpet. Okay. But then you can hold on to it uh-huh. quite a while and release it sort of calculatingly. Like, zap, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I mean, in order to kill somebody, you'd be probably rubbing, you'd be rubbing your 
head with the balloon for about three days. Mm. But uh, in order to just, you know, pow, scare the piss out of somebody. Yeah. Just walk across good, the house. Three, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Just walking mm. across the house. Okay. Uh, could uh, you could uh, be a real good uh, car starter? Like, uh, hey, your car's broken down. Oh, okay. Bzz. That's probably going to take a lot of static. Yeah, it's going to take a lot. Well, just hold on. What else you got going on? Let me walk around for a while. Yeah. Do you have a balloon by chance? No. Okay. Well, uh, how about a cat? Do you have yeah. a cat? Yeah. I could rub that on my head. No, no. Uh, how about AAA? You got AAA because I'm not very good at this getting <laughs> yeah. shit started. Getting shit thing. started. No, no, it would. Uh, you'd have to bring your own cat. That's. <laughs> If that's where you're going to, you know, rely, uh, you can, uh, you know, like, hey, do you need that 3.5 inch diskette erased? Well, I'm sorry for erasing it then because I did it without asking <laughs> yeah. by touching it. Hold on. <laughs> Let me go get my cat. <laughs> I can erase it again if you have a cat. Uh, but the cat have a cape. Or like you an know, outfit. I think that it would be important to dress like the cat. <laughs> <laughs> and if you velcroed up the cat, it'd be like doubling the cat's ability to produce static electricity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you have a cat wearing a Velcro uh, like costume that matches yours. And you got a two for one. It's going to double the amount of static. And also, you just Velcro the cat to your chest so that you can use <laughs> both hands when you need to use both hands. Hmm. I think no matter what, we can all agree that that cat is one of the l- most miserable creatures <laughs> on the planet, no matter what. I you bring treats. <laughs> <laughs> but you're just going to zap it when you try to put it in his mouth. Oh, shit. Sorry, cat. Yeah. Uh, I wasted a good zap No, you on can you. hold it. That's what I'm saying. You can hold it. You don't have oh, to. Yeah, you can okay. choose not to zap it. Like. You're wandering around with your hair standing straight up for three hours, touching things. Everybody's looking at you like, don't touch me. It's going to snap. You're like, no, I can hold it. But then when you need it, you're like, bam. Mm. If you don't want to work for the rest of the day, you just zap your monitor and it's broken. You have to wait for the IT to fi- IT guy to fix it. You just sort of look at your phone for 20 minutes. I think minutes. that's a one way pass to uh, getting fired because your <laughs> boss obviously knows that you have zap powers. Cut your hair short. Yeah. And, uh. It's an emotional uh, reliance cat. It they becomes a carry situation. I got mad today. My monitor blew up again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, why do you need to bring your cat to work Velcro to your chest? It's my emotional support cat. I think this, uh, in all honesty, I think this is only good for party tricks. I think this is as good as the master of balance. But uh, I, yeah, that's uh, that's. I just don't see a lot of use in this power. I think oh, this no, power party is tricks. super fun. It would be a lot of fun, though, yeah. I, Maniacal? A, a dick. No. To be a dick. To zap people. <laughs> or just that like, awesome. you could just shoot plastic cups across the room and shit. Yeah. Which is the same as flicking them. Yes. But it's a lot more uh, visually pleasing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, watch this. Which, I mean, that's what I'm going for here. Like, I'm not going for a 10, but even like. The drunken parlor trick? That's a four, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, uh I think it's uh, I think I'm gonna give it a four. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I'm gonna give it a four as well. All right, solid four. Yeah. I, I would be super entertained if I knew somebody who had that power. I'd be like, dude, best friends. Just don't do it to me, you little asshole. Yeah. I just don't see a lot of profit or helping mankind with it. <laughs> no. I'm yeah, because how long it would take to gather a usable amount of electricity is just sort of inefficient even with a cat covered in velcro <laughs> i wonder if uh nuclear man would stand up in a battle versus zappums well i think nuclear man likes cats <laughs> okay well, we'll see what happens in superman 4 speaking of superman 4 sam what have you got on it in the commentary of superman 4 which was made in 1987 writer mark rosenthal will repeatedly attribute any problems with the film to Golan and Globus, those penny-pinching devils. <clears throat> this is our, uh, what, like, eighth canon uh, we, film? We do as many canon films as we do every other. The trouble with Superman 4 is, however, most likely starting at the beginning of the four-film series. Producer Ilya Salkind began trying to acquire the rights to make Superman from DC in 1973. After a negotiation period of approximately one year... Ilya, his father, Alexander, and their partner, Pierre Spengler, purchased the rights 
from a very hesitant DC Comics. The production team around this same time would see the returns from their largest pictures to date, the three and four Musketeers movies, took 10 million and 8 million respectively, against unreported budgets. Yeah. Already you've got this Rosenthal guy and all these small timers, they don't know how to make a Superman movie. It's the other small timers that do. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. The team decides to make both Superman 1 and 2 simultaneously. Though the budget would reach $55 million on the project, it would seem the Salkinds had little idea of how much it would cost or how long it would take. They felt they needed a name in the game, thus they hired Mario Puzo sure. of Godfather fame to write the script. He would deliver a sprawling 550-page script. Aye, 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 aye. I don't know. Does that, is that good? That's uh, a lot. 110 makes a long movie. Yeah. You, 200 would be too much, probably, for the two movies. 550 is, like, whatever, the Game of Thrones length. Oh. it's It would be... 550 pages would probably shoot eight hours long. Uh, acclaimed writer, director... Robert Benton would be enlisted to rewrite the script, but would leave shortly thereafter for his own film, The Late Show. David Newman was to help Benton, but now he and his wife would assume full responsibility for reworking Puzo's script. They would succeed in reducing the script to 400 pages. Oh, what an achievement. Well, now adding, it's only six hours long. <clears throat> while adding time-sensitive, pop-culture-rich, camp-heavy tone, which featured Kojak as a cameo. Not Telly Savalas, fucking Kojak. <laughs> Isn't that the, the crazy dog? No, that's uh, Cujo. Cujo. Oh, that, he was probably in it, too. <laughs> yeah. Kojak is, who loves ya, baby? Oh, okay. I was just thinking about a rabid dog. Superman fighting off a rabid dog. Like, that's uh, how he, he starts did have a dog. Crypto. Crypto. Crypto was his dog. Kryptonite dog or Krypton, Kryptonian dog. Marlon Brando was another choice of the Salkinds and Spangler that they clung to and wouldn't release. Though early in meetings, he insisted on the part of Jor-El being played by a green suitcase or bagel. That would just have his voice. Marlon Brando, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Freaking nutter. <laughs> Why would you even like, it should be a suitcase. <laughs> uh, I'll voice the suitcase. <laughs> it's a green suitcase. It's Krypton. Kryptonite. It's like Samsonite. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Brando would also unintentionally unseat director Guy Hamilton of 007 fame. Due to his being unable to film in the original shoot, shooting location of Italy as he was wanted in that country for sexual obscenity. That's when what he, you get for showing off your dick. Yeah, and it was from uh, Last Tango in Paris. It was from a movie he made. It wasn't actually like he... He may have done something else there that got him that, but because uh, it is a little odd, like, you, sir, are under arrest. They couldn't go to Italy, so they go to England, and when England replaces Italy, all of a sudden Guy Hamilton has to drop out because he... After doing the 007 movies, he didn't really want to pay tax, so he was living in Spain under tax exile. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> the original directorial search involved rather extravagant names. It was a who's who of directors. The second directorial search was less extensive and eventually settled on Richard Donner. It should be mentioned that at one point Spielberg was being suggested to the Salkinds, but they didn't really get onto it. They just wanted to see how that fish picture was going to turn out. It didn't make any sense. Donner would bring in Tom Mankiewicz to give him a script that he could actually shoot. Mankiewicz would be the lone writer on the screenplay used for filming. This process was rushed and not done in keeping with guild bylaws, so Puzo, Benton, and the Newmans would receive screenwriting credit. Ah. Yes. Donner would give Mankiewicz a credit for a creative consultant. He would eventually actually go to uh, court to defend that he got a credit at all. <laughs> and they're like, well, since he did write the only screenplay that he used... Yeah, well, you can have it. Yeah, because that was worth going to court for. <laughs> well, that's better than nothing. Yeah, that's true. Well, I think the not just so he doesn't get credit, he doesn't get residuals. Like, they broke the guild laws, so that's like the, oh, we'll do you a solid, we'll leave them in. Like, he would have lost a shitload of money had he not won that suit, basically. Mm. Okay, that makes more sense. Yes. Though Dunner would never reportedly be... Given a budget or a schedule from the first day he was there, he was told that he was in violation of both the budget and the schedule. Day one. You know, you're really behind. Well, you guys have gone through three I directors. Just got already. off the plane. Although most accounts attribute Donner as the only thing that got the production moving, filming would drag, and there were various production holdups. 
around the 19th month mark, the Salkines would realize that the first, if the first one failed, they would be holding the bag on the sequel. They would halt production in order to release the first Superman. It would be in theater two months later. Superman would make $300 million worldwide. It was a big deal. Now, they had originally thought they were going to shoot both of them in eight months. That's idiocy. Pretty stupid. Director Richard Lester had been hired during the original production to serve as liaison between Spangler and Donner as the two had become at odds. Lester, who had never been paid by the Salkines to direct the two Musketeer movies, had won a series of lawsuits against the Salkines over the contracts, but would never be paid as they would just leave the country that he won the lawsuit in every time and move to a different country. Wow, they were able dicks. to get him on board by promising them that they would pay him for the movie if he came and helped out. And after the release of it, they realize, wait a second, we can fire Richard Donner, pay Lester, bring him in, do this other movie, get a new budget. So that's exactly what they did. They then would take the $55 million that was supposed to be the budget for the first one, use that to scrap half the footage, take that footage, make it a super cut for TV, allow TV stations to edit Superman however they wanted, provided it was over a three hour cut. Because when you're on TV, you're getting paid by the minute. Then they can fire Donner, bring in Lester, have him reshoot 51% of it, because it was 75% done, Uh and have a new movie. Guess who they brought in to write it? The Nelsons. So all the goofy shit in Superman 2 is from the Nelsons. So they keep Lester around for three. The Nelsons write three in total, and that's where this train was headed, had the Salkines been in charge the whole time. Okay. Are we at Superman 4 yet? Just about. Hmm. Enter Galana Globus, who can make the picture for $17 million. Sure. Now, Rosenthal is constantly saying that, man, these guys don't know what they're doing. The reason they didn't know what they're doing is every time anyone asked for more money, they would just say no. They didn't come on set. They didn't tell you how to do your job. But if you wanted more money, the answer was fucking no. Right. Director uh, Sidney J. Fury, who was a veteran of many films, had done 30, directed 30 films by that point. Well, Rosenthal and Lawrence Connor were the team that wrote this. They would also team up for such brilliant scripts as The Legend of Billie Jean, Star Trek IV, The Beverly Hillbillies, Tim eh. Burton's Planet of the Apes, Mercury's Rising, Ugh. The Sorcerer's Apprentice, and either an unused or early version of iRobot because they don't get credit for writing Ooh. it. Uh, in their defense, they wrote uh, Jewel, on the Ni- Jewel of the Nile, which I kind of thought was funny. Sure, it's a fun movie. Uh, it's not as good as Romancing the Stone. But... Now, Mona Lisa Smile, which I didn't like, but apparently other people did. I did not uh, like that one. I don't know that'll. Yeah, I, I didn't get that movie. Well, Galen and Globus didn't really make any of those movies, but they all stink. Yes. So, uh, time to look in the mirror. <laughs> to bring in some star fame, though, they added uh, Muriel Hemingway because she's so sexy. Oh yeah, with her giant eyebrows. Yes, and for comedy, they added John Cryer. Oh really? Gene Hackman and Margot Kidder come back just to spite the Salkines. Because they weren't making it. I don't think either one of them regret making this film. Christopher Reeves thinks it's the worst thing that's ever happened. Sure. So it really set his career back. <laughs> yeah, well, what about one through three? <laughs> or the horse. Shut up. <laughs> oh. Not cool. He, he didn't have a career at that point. No, he didn't. Because that uh, him and John Carpenter already kind of went down in the same handbasket with uh, Children of the Damned, which right. was quite... Uh, Quite not good. Well, the final insult, according to Rosenthal, is that some 45 minutes of footage were cut from the original version, and the movie would have made sense had those 45 minutes been in the movie, and it would have really been a lot better. Mm -hmm. Well, when he was invited to do the commentary and be so condemning of Glenn and Globus, they just went ahead and put those 45 minutes in the extras. Nice. So we'll decide for ourselves. Okay, so is that what we're doing is we're watching the movie and the 45 minutes of extras yeah, well, on the There's DVD? only about 20 minutes of extras that we have to watch. Okay, all right. All 45 are not good. <laughs> like it some sounds of like it, you're kind of trying to cram in two movies on us. Uh-huh. It's not two movies. It shouldn't have been two movies. It shouldn't have been one movie to begin with. <laughs> That's not justification for making me watch this pile. No, I think my... I don't usually pick movies because I have beefs with them. I'm picking this movie because I have a beef with the Superman series. <laughs> I think it fucking sucks. I don't like it either. And everybody's like, ooh, it's Superman 4. That's the one. I was like, no, they're all shitty. Yeah, they're all shitty. They're all shitty. I like the first one. It's really boring. And the special effects. Very effect, slow. 
and the special effects fall apart through the by the yeah by like minute 62 it starts looking like shit he's all of a sudden he just transforms into superman while flying yeah rather than going into a phone booth just like they 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 start mailing it in three quarters of the way through the first movie and they never really stop this one at least was cheap against that 17 million dollar budget guess how much it made 13 34 34 hey there you go those boys know how to make some money I and think that uh, set them up into uh, the success, quote unquote, of Superman Four. Set them into some other things, like uh, when they took over like, GM, took all the money, and went back to Israel. Yeah, well, they uh, that right. prompted yeah. them to start planning other projects that never got off the ground. And I think that Superman Four led to the debacle with the first uh, Spider-Man. Yes, that that ended up getting sold to Carol Cole and never getting made until. 2001 with Tobey Maguire. They were the ones, because of their success of this film, kiboshed the Super- or Spider-Man movie for 25 years. I don't think the movie's like streaming anywhere unless you rent it. Uh, I can't imagine nobody would have very hard access to this film. It's in a four super pack that I think you can get at Walmart for like five bucks or some crap. Anyways, check the movie out. Come back to us on Monday. And in the meantime, get to your phone booth. Fans of Stinker Madness iTunes thinks you don't like us. What? How is that possible? Well, it's because you haven't given us a review yet. Go to Stinker Madness on iTunes and take just a couple seconds to rate and review us there. While you're at it, hit up Stitcher.com as well. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at forward slash Stinker Madness and email us at talk at We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening and get to the chopper.